When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Pixie. Lights. Okay. Ready? Yep. Back to the Future. So Back to the Future takes place in 1985, which is also the release date of this movie. And boy does it feel 80s. The intro credit starts off with all these clocks everywhere, and uh, basically it's uh, Doc's house. And who is Doc you ask? Well the intro credits pretty much gives you all the clues in the world of who he is and what he's done and all that kind of stuff. He's a scientist who pretty much lives in his garage and still has some money left over. But then we meet the main character, Marty McFly. Marty McFly is a friend of Doc who also runs errands for him, you know, he's kind of like his paperboy slash delivery guy. I know they made a statement somewhere of how they met and how they became friends, Doc and Marty, but it was never said in the movie, so it was just kind of a mystery at first. So the first 20 minutes is basically the intro to Marty McFly's life. His lifestyle, you know, he's still in high school, he's in a band, he rides a skateboard everywhere. As he's going to school or his house, you see the whole town, you see how it is, it's kind of run down a little bit, kind of trashy, but not too bad. Living in Hill Valley, and is that a real town, real life? I don't know. We meet Marty's principal, he's kind of a dick. We meet Marty's dad, George McFly, and he's kind of a... He's pretty much a pushover. We see George's boss just treating him like shit and he's just taking it. We also meet Marty's mother who seems kind of bored in life. But she still loves to talk about old times, like she loves reminiscing. Little is known about his brother and sister. We meet his girlfriend, she's really nice. She was pretty and she was sweet, but she wasn't just eye candy. Anyways, after the intro to Marty's lifestyle, we finally meet Doc. Dr. Emmett Brown, he's so crazy and smart, you know, with his hair and everything, he's just like, oh, Marty! Doc shows Marty his latest invention, which is the time machine. The time machine he's been working on for like, ever! During the testing of the time machine, some terrorists come in, pretty much coming back to Doc, biting him in the ass. And what I mean by them biting him in his ass is because he made a deal with them, but it just kind of screwed them over. So now they're back, bite him in the ass. Shit goes down, so Marty has no choice but to get in the time machine and just drive the fuck out of there. He goes back in time, not knowing that Doc put the last destination time in the time machine to be 1955, because that's the time he was going to go back to see if that time machine actually works. Marty is now trapped in the year 1955. Everything has changed, the town, the people, the clothes. Everyone just thinks he's a weirdo because the way he's dressed. He meets his younger dad, he's still a pushover. He meets his mom who falls in love with him. So he has no choice but to look for Doc in this time mirror and try to convince him of what the hell is going on so he can help him. When Doc finally believes him, he tells him, you just being here has changed the entire timeline. You will cease to exist because you just messed up, you know, your parents meeting. So the rest of this movie is Marty trying to fix what he's done in the timeline. At the same time, Doc's trying to figure out how he's going to get Marty back to the future. Because you know the time machine just conveniently keeps fucking up. No spoilers, but I will say this. Towards the end of the movie, all hell breaks loose, causing everything that could go wrong, goes wrong. But... Just in case you haven't seen this movie, I'm not going to tell you the ending. Let's talk about the characters. There's Jennifer, Marty's girlfriend, played by Claudia Wells. She did good. Her chemistry with Michael J. Fox was actually pretty good. And then there's Biff, the douchebag of douchebags. I'm not going to lie, he did a good job. He was basically the bully, he just wasn't that smart, he just wanted to pick on people. If he saw something, he wanted it, he didn't care what he had to do. Of course I didn't like him, but I knew what he was there for, he was the villain, you know? So I was okay with him. But then he did something that was kind of dark for this movie, and I was kind of like, whoa dude, that's not cool. And then there's George McFly, Oh man, he's so lame. We first see him at his mid-age, he's kind of lame. And then we see him at his young age, and he's still lame. But he is a nice guy with a good heart. He was pretty nerdy, I'm not gonna lie, he did okay. I believed he was a pushover. His chemistry with Marty was also pretty good. It's Marty's mom, Lorraine, played by Leah Thompson. At first she played this boring old lady who doesn't want to do anything except talk about old times. And then we see her at her young age and she's really pretty. Of course they gave her the whole high school, nurse-like, you know, in love crush. Because all she did was follow Marty left and right like she was a puppy. It was an awkward situation, but it was hilarious. Seeing her back then as a kid and watching it now, damn. She still rocks that dress. Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown was hilarious. He's got this mad scientist look to him, you know. He was a little odd, but he was cool. His chemistry with Marty was perfect. These guys go great together. That's some pretty good acting. And then the main character, Michael J. Fox. Marty McFly, he was awesome. He was a cool guy, he had morals. If shit went down, he was ready. I feel like Michael J. Fox acting with anybody is always going to have some pretty good chemistry. I don't know why. As a kid watching Marty in this movie, I felt like I learned some things from him. I learned how to like, you know, talk to people and uh, to do the right thing in a bad situation. He was not as lame as his father. And then the DeLorean! The DeLorean! 
This thing is awesome. Growing up as a kid, I didn't know what a DeLorean was, but the way they modified it, I thought it was awesome. They made it look like Doc made this thing in his garage, you know, so it couldn't be too futuristic like. And everyone who's everyone loves this thing, so you can see people today customizing their DeLorean to look like the DeLorean in the movie. It's got all the wires and lights to it, it's awesome. This movie was adventure, sci-fi, and comedy, and probably some drama in there. It was really good, it was great in fact. On my own personal scale of 1 through 10, 5 being average, I'm going to give this movie a 10. Back to the Future gets a 10 out of 10. Can I watch it over and over again? Yes! Do I love this movie? Yes! I watched it a lot when I was a kid, and I still watch it now. Back when I was a kid, to this day now, this is still my favorite movie of all time. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. I remember in high school I ditched class just so I can go to the store to go buy Bad to Feature when it hit DVD for the first time. And yes, I still have the original VHS from back in the day. This thing is so old, like this is probably the oldest thing I own. Like not when it not when I mean like uh like you know, you know, something from like the 70s or anything. I mean something that has been with me from back in the day till now. This is the oldest thing I have. What'd you guys think of this movie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or has it been a while? Did this review make you want to go back and watch it? Because I'm pretty sure it would love to be watched by you. Anyways, that's it for this review and I hope I didn't brag on too much as usual. Hope to see you in the next video. Alright, see you next time guys. He's in a band. He rides a, a skateboard. Well, you shouldn't be holding that. <laughs> Basically, the bully. Ah. Is it good? Oh, close up. <laughs>